Hey, welcome back to the mod where your comments determine what gets added. Last time the theme was design a strong country that starts off as a puppet to a weaker country. Besides the overlord being communist, the theme was vague enough that you could really suggest nearly anything. So we got a lot of responses. First we'll get into the best of those and how they'll be used to make this mysterious country. And then we'll discuss the theme for next time. Also in the video description and pinned comment, I'll put a link to a poll you can take on some mechanics for this universe in addition to the next suggestion in the comments of the video and I'll reveal the results of that poll in the next video. I won't be reading any of these in their entirety but I'll put them on screen if you want to pause the video. First here we have a Kia led by Sven Svensson. Funnily enough the overlord country that was added in the last video Nakia already sort of reminded me of Ikea. I, I kind of thought of it as a communist Ikea where the workers took over. That may have influenced why I added it last time. Second we have Tanatuva. Notably this is not the only person who submitted a Tanatuva idea and it will hopefully not be the last. Third the free region of Kasano. This comment and a lot of others tied the way this new country became a puppet into the war I mentioned in the first video. Regardless of the comment selected some sort of tie into this would be nice. Next we have Schwartek, led by a mad ruler, also somewhat of a common theme that I will gladly implement. Sully suggests the provisional government of the North Bank. The best part about this is George Washington as a dragon. Next we have the Republic of Kona, led by the Communist Council, transformed into a Supreme Court. I think the idea of them being led by some sort of Supreme Court is very interesting. Of course this reckons to something like that. Supreme Soviet, but we'll be revisiting this too later in the video. Nokia, notably not the only suggestion for the name of Nokia's puppet to be Nokia. The Levad region, probably my favorite suggestion in terms of name. Nuketown, probably the most interesting idea. This one will be important later on too. And then country balls, China and Poland. Oi. The socialist federative revolutionary states where every man and woman is a king. This one does specifically mention it's a human country and a disclaimer for future suggestions. I will change whatever country I add to the game into dragons or dinosaurs or, or moths or catfish people. It's a kind of thematic point of this mod. The humans didn't exist 66 million years ago. It's hard to explain exactly why that's important. Maybe some of you can guess, but it'll make more sense later on. We just need to venture off to some of the more exciting late game stuff. The Red Inheritance, a poetic tale of how things came to be. Mothodraginia, led by everybody's favorite communist. Chonk 2 suggests the kingdom of the Red Star. A lot of suggestions do play into this country being some sort of kingdom, at least before it became a puppet state. Brandon suggests the hive mind collective of Fungar. This is one of the few suggestions that really places an Ikea on better grounds for controlling this nation, capturing the eternal mother of this Stellaris space entity. The Galactic Empire. Mm, well, Star Wars does say a long time ago, but this isn't quite in a galaxy far, far away. The Dodo Bird suggests the Cranian Reconstruction Government, also ruled by a council involving a king. I especially like how this one is explained, the eight rotten ideals. This one could also be implemented thematically into anything. N no, now we have monkeys. The People's Republic of, uh, I might butcher the intended pronunciation for this, but it's probably Chincha, Wallcat, King Burr, the Uncanny Commune, and the Catfish People. And sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but catfish weren't quite a thing yet. I guess dragons were never a thing. And this here is one of my top picks, but unfortunately not the one I decided to go with today. Argad's Army, another one of my favorites. And Awakened Trees, very spooky. And finally, what you've all been waiting for, the main country we'll be basing this off of, the Swords of Gaia. Militaristic, eco-fishistic, a holy order, followers of their goddess, Gaia. And what I like about this most is I don't know if I 
eyebrows base this off of one of the countries from last time, but the collective, one of the six additional countries introduced in version one is led by a certain nature loving goddess figure also named Gaia. It's time to start a conspiracy theory about this mod that I made. So I like how this one expands on the in universe lore and I think having a country that's like the swords of something is kind of cool. But in addition to this, we will be implementing a lot of other ideas because I think this one's story of how it became a puppet state is a little weak compared to some of the other ones and there's a lot of features that I've been mentioning that I want to add into this as our core idea to be implemented. Also, I, I kind of want to change the name of Gaia to something else. There's going to be a lot of proper nouns from Greek and Roman and English literature that we eventually use in this mod, but I'd prefer to not use the word Gaia as our goddess since it's such a kind of trope as using it for mysterious nature linked figures. So I'll probably change it to something like Viva, except that's like maybe Viva. Also, people wanted the leader of the swords to be in love with the leader of Nakia or imprisoned by the leader of Nakia. So we'll implement something like that, but maybe not with the leader leader specifically. And the theme for next time will be designing Country X. Country X starts off in a civil war, but why it's in a civil war and what the factions are is completely up to you. Probably the easiest option would be to have one imperial faction from the godless empire, but you don't don't have to do that if you just want to add some random civil war I'll fit it into the mod and like always I'll leave a template in the pinned comments too. So now it's time we venture east of the Solcitor Kingdom of the Sun to the Swords of Viva. We're led by Delta and at least for now we're under the ideology of the two societies. But that's not really what we want to be following. We have decent resources, mainly just a lot of tungsten, and enough steel that we can build up an army strong enough to eventually defeat Nakia. As of course the prompt for this week said, we are stronger than Nakia, quite a bit stronger in terms of factories, but our army does technically start off slightly weaker, but all of our divisions are very well trained. As for our industry, we will be diversifying into artillery and support equipment just because we won't have very much manpower. So we kind of need to go for quality over quantity until we become free because we have minus 80% recruitable population. For our focus tree, we will need to first get our independence by completing all of this. And then once we become free, we can decide what to do afterwards. And more will be added on to the end too after more countries around us are given content. The most important focus we want to do initially is reunite the swords so we'll rush down to that and then we can start focusing on other things. We'll just build military factories too. We'll hopefully get two or three out before the independence war. For research we will specifically get better artillery and better guns. We will want some of these passive buffs to defeat Nakia. We don't have to do too much to beat them but I have tested it and if we were to, for example, declare on them today on January 1st, 1936, it's impossible to win. So we do have to build up our army to beat them. It's not like a free battle. We at least get division attack and defense from our leader too. So that does give us a slight advantage, but still it's not enough to beat them one-on-one -on -one right now. And the basic lore is that we used to be independent. We were aligned with Bastia, but when the godless empire and Bastia got in a conflict, Nakia directly supported the godless empire while well, we remained somewhat neutral. But following it, regardless, our territory was divided among Nakia and the godless empire. Our old leader, the Marshal, fell in love with someone in the Nakian administration though and then was imprisoned in the city of Nakia. So they kind of hold our leader hostage, which set us back a bit. Our new leader, Delta, is even more of a radical when it comes to wanting independence, so it may have sped things up, it's hard to tell. But his captivity is the main thing keeping us tied to Nakia at the moment. I also made some uh, strategic regions, so now we have the Solcitor strategic region, the Nakia 
strategic region and then everything else is just in this one giant strategic region. We'll add more someday though. So we are now reuniting the swords which will give us weekly manpower and more autonomy gain. Because of one of our national spirits, Nakia dominance, we will eventually get annexed by Nakia if we don't do this focus. So we have to do this one. Now instead of reinstating the marshal, which we can't do until we do Operation Missing King anyways, we will militarize in the shadows, which will give us some military factories. We don't really want to reinstate state the marshal anyways because while he's the leader of our movement he kind of has sympathies towards the two societies and isn't a very trustworthy figure considering how he got imprisoned. We're a very nature themed country here in the swords. We're led by quite radical environmentalists after all and there are strange nature centered things going on here. And to make things even worse, Nakia once they took control of this area started doing strange experiments with robotics and stuff. We'll also be doing various focuses to decrease support for the two societies in our country, like capturing Nakian officers, dealing with Nakian loyalists. So now we will need to start building some trains too, just for supply. We, we don't really need too many. We should only need two or three. The supply situation will be really good here too. There are railroads everywhere and lots of supply hubs, but here we are last it is time to draw our blade and declare on Nakia. It shouldn't be too bad now. Again like I said the entire premise of this is that we are stronger than them. So of course playing as the swords is going to be easier than playing as Nakia and trying to keep control of the swords. But they should still offer a decent challenge. We'll just deploy our last division when it's ready and then everything should be good. And here finally the swords rebellion. We maybe can walk right into Nakia. Kia. Hmm, yeah. They won't capitulate yet because they have this good victory point here, but uh, if, as long as we keep enough divisions pinned, we can encircle this. Not too bad. It would be best to puppet them technically because we don't get cores on them, but uh, I'll just annex them so the borders look nice. And now we'll just bypass this and do one nation under Viva. And our focus tree now will allow us to unlock decisions for the ideals of our nation, for dealing with the god of our nation, and dealing with those mysterious trees. After that, we'll have to decide whether we want to make an alliance with Solcitor or if we want to invade them. We're the same ideology, and in a lot of regards, we are aligned in interest with them. We were both somewhat subjugated by the Empire and its allies. The Empire still controls some of our territory, and Solcitor kind of wants to take Draganiopolis. And then our end of the focus tree for now, we have to decide whether to fight the Godless Empire or fight Bastia, the hidden overlord. But anyways, that will be the end for now. Remember there's that poll in the comments if you want to help make some decisions about how this world will function. And remember to leave your suggestion for what you want to be happening in Country X here. And that will be added next time.